Hello and for person, this is Anton. And when it comes to mysteries of the universe, I actually love discovering new things. New unusual transients, new unusual explosions, new unusual radio signals that nobody can explain, and a lot of other unusual formations. But sometimes we get to find a solution to one of these mysteries. It looks like in this video we might be doing a bit of both. The third official discovery of an unusual mystery known as F-Bots, or fast blue optical transients, and at the same time a potential resolution to what these unusual transients are, or basically a solution to this mystery that was discovered back in 2018. But obviously here I'll probably have to explain to you what F-Bots are, why this was a mystery to begin with, and what we've discovered in the last few years. First of all, the word transient in this case refers to some sort of a space phenomenon that seems to appear and disappear relatively quickly. In most cases, these are usually supernova. But in the past, there have been transients that either did not have a good explanation or that would just appear in certain frequencies of light, such as radio light. One of the best modern examples of a transient mystery would be a fast radio burst, an FRB. This is a radio transient, and it's not really understood how this works just yet. But today we're talking about another type of transient, with this right here being the best and most well-known example because this was the first such example. The unusual observation officially known as SN28COW, or more commonly known in astronomy as the cow. And mostly because of this. This, by the way, was completely procedurally generated and is basically just an accidental name. These unusual phenomena are essentially, as the name implies, extremely fast, usually only lasting a few weeks. They also emit a lot of really bright blue light and then tend to disappear extremely quickly as well. So because of this and because they're visible in optical light, they're known as fast blue optical transients. And although they do share certain characteristics with a typical supernova, such as type 2 or type 1 supernova, something really specific makes them extremely different. First of all, usually they end up producing approximately 10 to even 100 times more energy or more luminosity compared to a typical supernova. Second of all, they last much shorter, they disappear really, really quickly, and all of this energy is produced extremely quickly as well. But more importantly, according to some of the recent studies, the total amount of energy released by such an event seems to be absolutely ridiculous, even compared to a supernova. And that is why these phenomena today have been some of the biggest mysteries when it comes to astronomy. Nobody at the moment knows how these unusual explosions or these transients are produced, and no theory can explain everything, or at least until relatively recent studies. And the thing is, these events seem to be really, really rare. So the other famous event here, referred to as the koala, once again because of these procedurally generated letters KWLA, was actually the second such event. Then within a few months, another one was found, but this time without a cool name, and now, only a few months ago, the scientists have identified the most powerful such event, and this one is referred to as the camel. Once again, because of the procedurally generated name, and I guess it does sound like camel. And all four of these detections seem to share the amount of energy released, and also to some extent the way that this energy was released as well. In every single case, most of the energy and most of the luminosity produced seems to only last for a few weeks. A regular supernova would last for at least a few months, sometimes even a year. As a matter of fact, the peak brightness here is only reached after a few days. And more importantly, a lot of this seems to appear out of nowhere. It's basically a sudden explosion that appears and then disappears just like that. But the most difficult part to explain is of course the amount of energy released. So normally when it comes to really powerful explosions, such as a typical gamma ray burst, these very powerful events, or the most powerful explosions in the universe, can generally accelerate matter to almost the speed of light, which means that they do actually release a tremendous amount of energy, because that's really, really difficult to achieve. But in terms of the total mass of material here, it really represents only like one millionth of the mass of the sun. So only a tiny fraction of mass ends up accelerated, with the rest just being dispersed around. But when it comes to every single one of these F-bots, they seem to launch anywhere from 1 to even 10% of the mass of the sun to approximately half the speed of light. And that is ridiculous. It requires a tremendous amount of energy to accelerate matter to this velocity, and at the moment there's really no good explanation for how any of this can be achieved. 
And yes, even aliens is not a good explanation here, because it just does not explain anything. However, these recent observations from the CAMEL, the most recent FBOT, allowed the scientists to detect a lot of other frequencies and more importantly provided some answers. So first of all, initially some of the radio frequencies were also detected here. And when the scientists detect various radio frequencies, it essentially suggests that some of the material or the blast coming from the central explosion is most likely interacting with various types of gas here. But because of the type of frequencies and because of the amount of radio light emitted, it suggested that this gas was moving really fast, approximately half of the speed of light, and there was a lot of it. And that's actually the biggest problem here. What can possibly produce this? Generally in astronomy, the radio emissions are produced by what's known as the synchrotron radiation. It's basically when, for example, an electron has to suddenly change its direction and due to the acceleration, it ends up releasing a radio light, a radio photon. And this, in essence, is usually explained by very powerful magnetic fields or by some sort of interaction between matter. For FBOTs, no explanation seems to explain everything just yet. But he also discovered that then this unusual explosion was also glowing in the X-rays, something that started happening much after the visual light faded. And normally in astronomy, X-rays suggest extremely dense and very powerful objects, either a black hole or a neutron star. And that was actually one of the first hints to what can possibly produce all of these unusual explosions and these unusual events. Although technically, usually these are the culprits for most of the powerful explosions anyway. So it's not really that mysterious that it would be a black hole or some sort of a neutron star. But what these observations from the camel suggested is really one thing. Whatever happened in this region, it was happening inside an extremely dense cloud of material where a lot of energy was basically suddenly colliding with all of this gas. And that was the only way to explain both the radio waves, the X-rays and so on, and how all of this was suddenly being produced. But the production of X-rays most likely involved either some sort of an extremely fast spinning neutron star or an extremely massive black hole. Okay, not super massive, but more massive than a typical stellar mass black hole. So possibly something that's maybe 30, 50 or 100 masses of the sun. And so one way of referring to these events or these transients is actually semi-relativistic explosions. These are explosions that usually involve very, very powerful and very massive relativistic objects, neutron stars or black holes. Which was in essence at least one explanation coming from this recent study. But then we had another study that you can also find in the description below that used the afterglow observations from the original FBOT to potentially finally solve the mystery once and for all. And specifically what they identified in this paper are not just X-rays, but they identified X-ray pulses. With the pulsations repeating every 224 Hz, or basically roughly around once every 4.4 milliseconds. Something that was observed over a period of about 60 days. In this study, they were able to trace millions of these X-ray pulses and their repetition presented a very important piece of evidence. Because of that frequency of 4.4 milliseconds per burst, it implied that wherever this object was, its size could not be bigger than the total distance of light traveled in those 4.4 milliseconds. And that implies that the object could not actually be bigger than approximately 1000 kilometers. That's basically the distance that the light travels in 4.4 milliseconds. As a result, it implies that this object has to be really compact. And at the moment, theoretically, we only know of two such objects, a neutron star or a black hole. But a neutron star, once again, does not explain some of these emissions. So the most likely answer at the moment seems to be a relatively massive black hole. In this case, its mass cannot be more than 850 masses of the sun, but is most likely very massive, still massive enough to explain some of these really powerful emissions. And so what exactly is the scenario here and what do scientists believe happened? Well, at the moment, the best explanation involves a black hole being born inside of a very massive star. In this case, if a star starts collapsing and creates a really massive black hole, this black hole will still start devouring some of the material inside the star and in the process releasing a tremendous amount of energy, which will then start generating a lot of these frequencies we're observing. But unlike some of the other supernova from some of the other more common stars, this could be maybe coming from some sort of an extremely massive star. Like for example, some of the similar objects that we find in a nearby large Magellanic cloud. For example, the most massive star known to us, R136A1, 
located in a large Magellanic cloud that's roughly around 350 masses of the Sun, the star you see right here, the biggest one, is going to go supernova in the next few millions of years. And what exactly happens to it when it goes supernova is anyone's guess. And so maybe this is exactly what happened here. Maybe this was just an extremely massive B-type or A-type star with hundreds of masses of the Sun, and it essentially produced a black hole in the center that basically absorbed the rest of the star, and as it did so, it emitted a tremendous amount of energy really, really quickly. Now, that's obviously just one of the explanations, but there could be some other explanations. Either way, though, this transient, this supernova event, or whatever happened here, did seem to involve some sort of a massive and compact object. No more than 800 masses of the Sun, but very likely extremely massive. At least that's the best explanation we have right now that can explain both the radio light, the very bright blue optical light, and of course the pulsations from the X-rays that were recently detected. Which means that we might have gotten much much closer to solving this mystery once and for all. But new observations and new such events would help us understand this a little bit better. And I'm sure because of the amount of different telescopes observing the night skies now, we're going to be finding more of these events in the upcoming years. Remember, the first one was only found in 2018 simply because our telescopes got much better. Although to be more specific, it's not that the telescopes got better, but the ability to communicate between telescopes and then sort of trace some of the light observed by one telescope by a lot of other telescopes, that's actually what improved. The scientists are now able to combine different observations from different telescopes and see exactly what happened in a certain part of the night skies. And so the future of astronomy is really in this multi-frequency approach. But for now, when it comes to FBOTs, well, it's a partial solution to a problem, but not really the exact solution we're looking for just yet. Something I'm sure we'll be able to do much better once new telescopes like James Webb Telescope become operational. And because these transients or these explosions are so fascinating, and because they're produced by something ridiculously powerful, that's why I think it's one of the biggest and most interesting mysteries we have today. On that note, check out the studies in the description below, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, and share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. Maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Either way, stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.